What's going on everybody? Today's video, we're going to be talking about Cards HQ that just opened up this past Thursday. Um, some of the reactions across the YouTube channel, social media, my opinions on what needs to be done for both sustains and improves. And Mr. Wilson, Jeff, can I just call you Jeff in this video? Because Mr. Wilson reminds me of the guy behind the fence he used to peek up over on home improvements. Let's go with Jeff. I hope you get the chance to watch this video. And don't take this as somebody nitpicking you to no ends. I'm trying to do this to make this better for the hobby overall because you have a huge platform. Social media followings, you call it, you know, it's there. And if your shop is a bust and it closes down, it'll look really, really bad for this industry across the board. So my improvements, I really hope that you listen to them, um, take them into consideration. You know, it, it's just one of those things. I don't know if you're getting good, solid feedback from your, in, I don't know if it's called Influencer Night or your pre-pre-opening down there with Culture Collision and all that stuff where, you know, people are like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. I wouldn't change nothing. There, There's a lot of room and a lot we're going to discuss in this. So, guys, girls, beverage of choice, snacks. You know, if you got to go outside, have a cigarette, whatever you got to do, go ahead and do that now. Hit that pause because we're going to go into this here. It may seem a little rough, um... For some people, they're real big with sports card investor and stuff like that there. But I really want to hit a lot of the stuff that's being talked about. And then the sustains and some of the improves that I see offhand. So what I want to talk about is we're going to talk about what I call the YouTuber block party that happened at Cards HQ. No, no, I was not invited. I wouldn't have went anyhow. Um, it's not my, my cup of tea, guys. So it was packed. A lot of people walked in there. I heard a lot of people, a couple of people voiced their opinions. They weren't too happy with it. Some people very happy, I guess, onto it. Um, there was a lot when you looked, he had to go into building this. He teamed up with two other gentlemen. Uh, I'm not going to pull the website up and all that other stuff, but a lot of time goes into putting into your own card shop, opening it. This here is huge. It's a big shop. And I don't think you're using your space <laughs> accurately. I'm just going to come out and say it. There's better space management that could go with building codes, fire codes, and all that other stuff across the board. I know they're all different across different states, counties, cities, got it. But there's a minimum you have to meet um, that's federal. So let's go into some of this stuff here. I'm trying to think where I want to start at. Let's start with the... Uh, card or the card influencer night whatever you want to call it uh i listened to one of jeff's videos before he opened up too and i heard a couple of the i guess you call them, i call them youtubers everybody else calls them influencers i don't even know what terminology is on to it but he was going to set a price fair market value is the word it was used on his pricing of his cards and there was no negotiation that's a sustain and i actually applaud that but when he came about saying and doing that, he's come across with a lot, I would say a lot of people as being very much a hypocrite. Because what does he do? He goes out there before he had a shop and he taught and he tried to get everybody else to do it, kids and everything. Just not his own children, you know, other people's stuff too. He said, hey, you got to learn how to negotiate. At his shop, Cards HQ, there's no negotiation. Price is there. You want it, you buy it. Otherwise, you know, move on, find it somewhere else type deal. I do applaud that because there's not that there should be like the standard out there. That's where we went wrong. That's why a lot of these card shows are faltering and dealers are getting out because everybody coming to the table wants to offer anywhere from 50 to I'll say 80 percent being the highest. I mean, depending on who you are and who you know and what the cards are you have, I kind of get some of it. But just in general knowledge. It's all been that way for years now, and if he can stick to his guns by this is the price it is, onto my sticker cards here, they're in these expensive, you know, state-of-the-art display cases, then I think that would be a good thing, and hopefully it rubs off with more people across the board. 
I am not saying, you know, you set up at card shows and stat and you go work deals back and forth between two buddies and, you know, you've known each other for a while. That's a totally different story. But every single person comes to your table, they're like, what you really take for that? How low will you go? All that crap. It's out the door in a shop. He doesn't even want it in there. I understand where people are saying he's coming across as being, you know, a hypocrite because that's what he's preached for so long. But if you're going to make changes with a large platform that you have, I applaud that and I, I give that as a sustain, to be honest. that That's one of the biggest pieces that i seen on to it. I was skeptical at first when I heard it. And I was like, you know, you're letting money walk out the door, but I get what you're doing because you have an overhead now. Well, a lot of people don't realize, okay, he has an overhead because he owns a shop. There's overheads when you set up at shows, table fees, gas, food, hotels. All that stuff comes into play as overhead too, just like eBay. eBay takes its cut because it has its overhead to provide us, you know, eBay itself. They got to keep the lights on, pay people and all. That's why some people get the 15%. Some people are, you know, 12, 11. Some people probably get three and five, depending on what they do with eBay and all that. But you have to understand, there are overhead. And I think that's really starting to kick in them. It's like, I have overhead. And we're going to talk about overhead on to here because I just think things out loud a lot. And this is a big shop. I at least know there's ten pe around 10 people working there, if not more. And he's now being held responsible for their paychecks. And you got to make profit nonstop. So that's the one sustain I do have that I did like here, and I know a lot of people didn't because they're like, oh, I've done deals with Jeff in the past, and, you know, he won't even come down 10%. Hey, he has a bigger overhead now. This ain't just a regular, you know, a $1,000 to fifteen, dollars $2,000 show he's setting up at where he's, you know, has to get two nights in a hotel, you know, probably a four or five-star hotel, airline ticket out there. You know, and all that might maybe it runs him three thousand. Now you're talking this thing here. I bet you it's fifty thousand a month just with rent and probably utilities, if not more, maybe less. I don't know. Maybe he's being sponsored out there. I know I heard rumors that you know maybe this is the fanatic shop of the future and they're paying him. I don't know this stuff. If it is, good for him because it takes away from his overhead and less stress and burden onto his shop and him and getting you know stuff out there. But. This here, uh, that's that's going to be another topic. I don't want to keep going on side tangents onto it. So let's move into it here. I'm going to show two video clips. One, Sports Card Radio, this is off of your video. I did mute it and stuff like that there. But I go, you guys showed this part of the video. This was yesterday. Jeff, why well, do a grand opening on a Thursday? Seriously, think about this. It's a Thursday. You should have done your grand opening on a Saturday. Maybe even a Sunday to where kids have time off. Who's your biggest YouTube audience? That's what you got to ask yourself. The kids are going to want to come in there. They want to buy their Pokemon and stuff like that. You should have did it on the weekend. And this is why it is. I do know two guys. I've known them for since, so oh, when I get to Georgia, like 2003. So somewhere around there and forward, they went up in there and it was, they told me it was dead. Dead. So I'm just going to hit play here. It's probably going to run for a few. I don't know. Oh, they're flipping it back and forth. Let me see if I can find where it's at here. They had it on. Oh, now we get a commercial. Of course. Thanks, YouTube. All right, guys. Bear with me the commercial on, too. It'll be over in like two, one. All right. Love the commercial. So this is the part of the video. It'll be coming up here. There it is. There's nobody in here at all. None whatsoever there's a few people through the alleys they're flipping through stuff i wish i could get to where it was playing uh longer because they kept looping it for a minute but this is trade night right here i believe in his store yes trade night there and all that but i'm telling you if i could find where they started this at i thought i had it to the point here it is just look there's hardly anybody in here this is your grand opening look at all this space that's open here why I mean, I kind of like the little lounge area. I get it and stuff, but you need to put other stuff here. But this just, that's not good for a grand opening, man. I'm going to be honest. I, I know you wanted to push things, times for deadlines and all this other stuff. You should do it on a Saturday. If it's one thing I could say you could have done good, take it from Card Collector too, the way he runs his uh, trade nights. You should incorporate it somehow into your 
grand opening, did it on a Saturday, got with all these people like BCW, Panini, Upper Deck Tops, got stuff from them for giveaways, goodie bags for the kids. From my understanding, there was nothing like that there. I, I could be wrong. Maybe the guys that when I knew that went up there came in there late. I don't know. Or maybe that happened later on in the day. You know, how with these long tables in here, hey, if I'd had a busy, if you had been busy, I'd have said order pizzas for everybody and let them sit down, get to know them, have your community support you. Um, I just don't, I can't fathom why you'd have done it on a Thursday at all. I'd have done it on a weekend, you know, pushed it out, everything like that. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of people talking after Culture Collision when he did his little um, trade night or whatever you wanted to call it with who's who in the YouTube and social media world that it was going to be dry and he would find out. And it's no joke. He really did find out into this. Um, unless this really popped later on that nobody's tracking, but I guess there's some long video where he went live at and somebody screened through it. It really didn't look that busy. A couple kids broke some boxes and stuff like that. But I don't know. It just looks really, really rough in your grand openings like this. And you're supposed to be bringing people from your community and everything inside for it. I mean, I was expecting Jeff to go out there and have the mayor there of Atlanta and all this other stuff to get, you know, get the publicity for it. This is a big thing, you know. And it just, this here just really shocks me by it completely. Maybe, you guys, I know a lot of people probably watch this video now that are big SCI people. Is there something going on this weekend that's bigger and he's holding to bring all that in? I, I don't know. I don't really follow. I'm just looking at your grand opening day and it's dead. All right. Um, I'm going to start playing a little bit here from this, I believe. Let me look here. Michael Ham's and fi Michael Ham Fishing and Sports Card Hobby. Is, sorry, I'm only doing this one take. So... This here's uh, some of his video onto it. So as you can see, there's Cards HQ. And this is where I'm going to hit a lot of improvements need to be made. I will say, you did get a sustain for me, which was more than I usually did give out. I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> there's, there's a couple other sustains that I like to. I'll hit um, as we walk around through this. Oh, let me mute that so you guys don't hear it and stuff. All right. So you... We're going to have these dumb videos because I'm not a, uh, or dumb ads because I'm not a, what do you ever call it, a paid person on here. So here we go, walk it in, Cards HQ, there's all the little stuff. I guess they're handing something out there. Like I said, it's like the social media convention of who's who supposed to be in here and stuff like that. It looks nice. As you see, if he pans back over, you can see like over this way, oh, you guys can see it. to the left of the guy's head here, there's supplies, right? And I'll let this pan through here a little bit. You got your main checkout right there with some wax behind there and everything. You know, I I don't know what that's supposed to be. And I don't think that guy did either. You can see way back uh, coming up here. There it is. Well, he passed it pretty quick. There's the one that says supplies. When they buy supplies, well, I'll hit that here in a second. Look at this here. So much space in between these cards. And the one thing that gets me is you don't know what's where. Jeff, put some signs up and say baseball, basketball, hockey, football. Something to where it draws the person so he's not walking through getting frustrated. Like, where the heck's the basketball cards? Where's the hockey? Where's the, you know, Pokemon, Magic the Gathering? You could put signs on top of these cases. It will not look tacky. And I know you'll go all out onto them. Get something hanging down. It doesn't have to be stand up on display, you know, that directs people where to go onto it. Trying to see if I, he comes back over to it. The wax boxes and stuff like this here. I got it's all the non-sports. I mean, as long as you have a GTS, Southern, something kind of cat like that, Pokemon. I know you, uh, you guys probably... I, I'd rather you guys watch Michael Ham's video than me going through this. Let me find... I had it bookmarked originally. Okay. Unless he sold out of his supplies, which I highly doubt it. This is BCW. I know pricing. I have my own account there and everything. This should be stacked. When he showed the initial picture coming in, they weren't stacked up. So I don't know if they didn't order enough. If they're, you know, maybe because BCW, you know, sometimes you have to wait and wait and wait and wait. And they broke it up into small orders. I have no idea. But if you're going to be part of a breaking room, you want to hire breakers. You're going to need a lot of top loaders and stuff, man. 
a lot. You're going to be ordering by crates of this stuff. I'm just giving you a fair heads up from a guy that used to break, and I know plenty of bigger breakers out there and stuff. They fly through it. So my other thing is where it says supplies, it was nice, lit up, you knew where to go. But like everything else here, you don't know where it is. Look, there's just some basketball hanging out right here. You know, turn around. Oh, at least there's basketball back to back. There was some one part in here where they went somewhere, and next thing you know, you saw hockey. It was really strange. But I mean, it, it's displayed very nice. Don't get me wrong. These are really nice. I was trying to see if there was a way where these things were locked. It looks like you could just slide these things left and right and they open. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. Look, there's hockey. That's what I was talking about. If you look right before this, look, tennis to something else to hockey. It, it doesn't really, or to you know, tennis, some cycling, then you go hockey. You're going to lose people by this. And there's the sticker prices on to it. Nice. He has the barcodes and all that. You know, the prices are on. It's supposed to be fair market value. Hopefully, they're updating them with his app, Market Movers, which is not sponsoring my video. Um, but that's a big thing right there. There we go. Nice big. Uh, thing QR or barcode, all that stuff onto it. Some of the things that I will say that when you watch everybody's video on this, I don't want to steal all their videos and stuff. I wanted to use it partly for this here. Is that you need to really dig in? I'm telling you, the way you have your space in there is not right. I know you want to do card shops, the future, and everything else like that. But you have to sit there and look at what has also worked in the past. I heard a lot of guys on YouTube and social media, oh, he's doing all these brand new things. Guys, other shops have been doing this for a long time, selling on whatnot, eBay, uh, my slabs, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, whatever else is out there to sell on. He's not reinventing the wheel. He's just a bigger thing, and it's being shown more. Um, and this is where it's going to start coming into play. If you look at this here, it doesn't look like he has a whole lot of cards that are displayed. I'm going to let the video run here for a little bit. Uh, I think there's only like another four minutes onto the video. And I'll probably stop it as I keep talking here. But how are you getting your how are you getting your cards? That's my first question. Do you think people are just going to walk in all the time? No. It's not going to happen, Jeff. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to do a lot of hard legwork. You can't rely on your employees to do it all. You cannot rely on your employees to do it all. So if you see back here, you can see where these... It looks like he has uh, these little cabanas, I think they're called, and stuff like that, where you're supposed to be able to break. Look at this. Add, add, add. Man, whoever's video this is, I'm getting you a lot of YouTube revenue. But we're going to pause it, because I don't want to keep playing ads for you guys. But here's some stuff I want to talk about. Your overhead is expensive. You primarily go to card shows and you negotiate and set up at Taboos now and, you know, you're buying cards and from what I've seen, anywhere from 70 to 80%. I'm going to just go unrealistically here. You have 10 employees and you're going to pay them 30000 a year. That's $300,000 that you have to come up with a profit to pay those employees on top of your overhead. You would have to buy a million dollars in cards at seventy percent, take those profits just to pay those. I mean, how much are you realistically buying at each card show? Forty, fifty thousand. Maybe you luck out and buy a couple of dealer tables at a hundred thousand. That's not the way to keep doing it. You're buying slabs. People, a lot of people don't come in to buy slabs. Believe it or not, you're gonna people want to look at raw cards. They're looking to see, hey, he missed these in his value boxes. Um, set builders, I'm telling you, get those old guys in there, man. Let them come in there, have some pots of coffee on for them. Let them take a box over to a table and sit down and look through the 57 tops and let them, you know, try to find what cards they need for a set. That's where your state of your art should be at. Somehow, some way, making it because I didn't see any value boxes. I didn't see anything where set builders with the big white five row boxes and stuff like that, you know? I got it. You're gonna you're afraid somebody's gonna steal from you. Jeff, people are gonna steal from you regardless. If you wanna do it that way, block off one of those little areas where we have all them tables at and make it into a room 
to where people go in there, sift through value boxes, whatever, and put a guy in there with a the cash register. Small little thing. He can sit in there with some TVs and stuff like that there. And you could do your value boxes that way there. Sorry, guys, my phone was vibrating. Knocked something off the table. I still don't know what it was. Oh, it was my box cutter. I'm not saying that's the correct answer, but you need to have value cards. Oh, well, we're I got it. We're going to be using those all for our whatnot. You need way more, guy. Way, way, way more. If you're trying to feed whatnot, and you're trying to have be successful, I mean, bad example, but good example, backyard breaks. There was times they had five or six streams going at one time frame. That's what you need to do to move that type of inventory. But where are you going to get it from? You're not Burbank cards. He has mountains and freaking butt crack holes full of cards. Warehouses. That takes time to get. That's why I wouldn't open this up so quickly without having all that stuff. And now you're like, well, where am I going to go around and buy cards at? Facebook Marketplace, offer up all that stuff. Yeah, but you're going to have to turn into what David Adams has done and have Reed buys, where Reed gets in his David Adams cargo van, drives around, buys up collections and stuff all across and brings it back. But what's that end up doing? Then you got to have people go through, sort it, put it into little areas and stuff like that. I know that's not where you're going to say your money is, but if you go look at Burbank, I think they sold like off of just their positive feedback, a quarter million of cards. I guarantee you, though, they probably sold five to six times that because not everybody leaves feedback. And if every one of those cards are a dollar or two dollars, you know what he bought them for? Pesos on the penny. Because he's buying out collections. That's why. And if you want to make it big to where you don't have the stress and the burden, you have to do that. you got to have somebody sorting through them looking like, hey, man, I know what I'm doing here. Ooh, hey, we want to grade this, Jeff. Grade, 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 grade. You know, wipe off fingerprints, submit, flip, turn, keep moving money in and out. But I don't know how many of your friends are telling you this. And please, if you take this into consideration because I hate to see anybody fail. Regardless of what I think about a person out there, somebody stepping out. I know there's jokes, you know, he took a third PPP loan out and all this stuff. I got it. But if he fails at this, and this turns into a bust, like that NFT that he did and other stuff, it's going to hurt us all as a whole because he's the center spotlight with all this stuff right now. They're not looking at Burbanks and all this stuff like that there. It's his center attention because the amount of people watch his videos Social media, all that stuff across the board is what comes into play onto it. So if if we could help with success, maybe it'll happen. But you're you gotta look. That overhead's huge each month. How are you gonna do that? You just can't say I'm gonna go to this card show this week, two card shows, three card shows a month, and plan to spend all this money. That's not gonna work. I'm telling you. Listen from experience. You could go out there and spend all the money you want, but you got to have a ton of inventory coming in and out. And then you might have to have a warehouse of it. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, wherever you want to put a warehouse at, but you got to have a never-ending supply of it, especially if you want to be on there just running nonstop whatnots all day long, shippers and all that. I mean, you might have to expand to having 40, 50 employees there. You know, you might have two tech, tech guys and you're making sure all the stuff's working tech-wise and all that. It, it comes into play onto all this. So, you know, I know this kind of looks like a shotgun blast that, you know, hey, your whole thing's all jacked up. It's really not. you got to listen to the criticism out there and not from everybody saying, oh, this is great. Oh, yeah, I love it here. Yeah. I'm looking out because I don't want you to fail because I have a bad feeling that if you fail, it's going to hurt a lot of people, whether they're card shop owners, collectors, heck, even the uh, freaking YouTube flippers and stuff out there could get affected by this. I got it that there's a lot of space missing off of some of these cards. Maybe some people bought them. I have no idea. But overhead. I'm telling you, your best thing to do is hire somebody that likes to go travel Give them a gas card, a credit card, so they can go get themselves, you know, a two-star, three-star hotel every night and have them just go by. You know, have them come home, drop off, give them a couple days off, go do it again. 
They're going to have to go all over the country, Jeff, to get this stuff. And you have to scour nonstop. Then you have to start grading this stuff. And then you have to wait for it to come back in and start making those massive gains. Because right now, I mean, unless there's some kind of, you know, secret, you know, sponsorships that's going on right now that, you you know, they're not getting recognized for or whatever that's helping you out, that overhead's going to come back and get you. And you've got people working for you, their jobs and everything out there. All right. Let me move on here with this. Let's move on. Because we hit overhead and everything on to it. Like I said, the signs labeling this out. You don't need to have all those tables. You're never going to be that busy. You need to take advantage of all them spaces. And honestly, you should look at Burbank's model. I mean, I know you're now in competition with Burbank. But look at how they have their stuff. This here, to me, I got you wanted the little kids to go up there and show, look, they're opening up some wax packs and stuff. I got it. It looks cool. But how often do you think that area there is going to be used? Seriously. Take it how many hours you're up in a week. I guarantee you three, four hours, maybe max, that table will be used. I would take that area, make it into like a sub area or somehow with it to where people go in there, go through value boxes and everything else. If you're worried that it's not going to look and make the etiquette thing, Make a room just for it so it takes the eyesore away. But that's where people want to come through. They want to go through bargain bins and everything. Dollar boxes, $2, $10 for sale boxes, whatever it may be you want to call them. I didn't see none of that out here. And then whenever you want to hold your uh, trade nights with all these tables and stuff, then you just rearrange it a little bit. Throw some tables up, people come in. It looked like a lot of people were using the tops of uh, stuff in there anyhow to do stuff on. But I mean... This is busy because this is that like pre pre grand opening and got invited and come in and do some trades and everything else type deal. That's why it looks like this. Otherwise, you see an opening day, guys, from that one video. And like I said, I had two guys I knew from up in that area went up in there and they're like, it was dead. A couple people and there was more employees than uh, people walking around buying in there. And that's a shame. If you got 10 people working, you're like, uh-oh. You don't want them to lose faith in you now. And if people are giving you, you know, ideas and critiquing you, telling you, look at this to help make your stuff better, you know, if you have to, reach out to them. Like, hey, I'm curious. What did you mean by this? Have one-on-one -on -one dialect, do it on Zoom, Google Meetings, over the phone. I, I don't care. I'm not saying you've talked to me. There's plenty of other people that have a lot of experience with this that could tell you, hey, you got to look at doing this stuff. I know you want to be the card store of the future and number one and all this. But to me, when I would walk into this, I would think this is like a big kid thing, like Pokemon, because all the stuff on the walls and stuff like that there with all the mural paintings, the like cartoons and that. I, I don't see a whole lot of sports going on and for a sports card store. God, it's called Cards HQ. It means various. This is the other thing. I'm glad he hits us now. This is like almost all Topps products when you go in there. Guess who has their Fanatics license? But where's all the Panini? Oh, wait, they do show up. It's a bunch of little stuff. Or it's not little stuff. It's a little bit of stuff that's more higher end from back in the day. It might have been bought out by somebody, you know? That's what I'm telling you. It looks and presents well and nice. You have the connections, the social media, whatever it may be, to make this happen. Don't do too much at once. It's going to burn you. You're going to want this and that. Hey, you guys work on this. How about you all work on one thing, get it fixed, then move to the next. That's what's wrong with a lot of things out there. Don't worry about having cabanas where everybody can come in there and do breaks on cards. Man, idea was kind of cool. I don't like to work cabana. It kind of just sounds like Fifi Fufu stuff to me. I, uh, I already got it. People are going to freaking hashtag Fifi Fufu right now in the comments. I got it. I know it's going to happen. But there's an, there's an ad for everybody. I got somebody else another freaking nickel. Um, those cabanas, I would make it into, you know, two or three solid breakers and two or three solid whatnot, guys. You need to get them going. And don't worry about, oh, we're going to put stuff on the wall so they can show. No, they don't need it on the wall. They need it right there in their desk. Card one, boom. Card two, unless you're going to have them load them all up into there to where you're going to label them all out. That aren't graded. Card one, card two, card three. They put a sticker on. Get a system going. 
get it as soon as they get, you know, two, three hundred of them things done or that stream ends. All those cards have the sticker on it. Whoever's doing your shipper things in there, they're starting to ship away. I mean, you got to use it. Don't worry about, oh, I want to have this for the public and this and that. Shops have been around for a long time. Oops. Yeah, She-Ra. He-Man. Let me go back. We're going to freeze it here on one thing. All right. So, back to what I was saying here. There's a one sustain, though. Definitely, I like the fixed pricing. I'm not budging. No negotiations. Because when you start doing with a lot of that, I got it. Then it takes time away from other customers. But eventually, even all the great uh, stores out there, Burbank and etc., they still negotiate. But I kind of like it. I do. I mean, it's one of those things where I still think that if you're a dealer or you're set up at a table and all that stuff, you pay all that stuff. That's your overhead. Why do you keep on cutting away from your profits to nip away from that by giving everybody 70, 60% deals? I got it if you want to walk up to somebody you don't know, hardly ever see, probably doesn't have licenses anyhow. You say, I'll give you 50% for the whole table, and they're like, oh, do it for 60? Okay. I got stuff like that. But if I walked up there and I wanted that one Gretzky, it's 13,000, I shouldn't be able to walk up to him and be like, I'll give you eight. Hey, cash. It's cash. Cold cash. I got where he's coming from. He can't do that no more. You're a shop owner. But if you weren't a shop owner, would you still go up to other people and other people in their shops and ask them if they'd take less for it? That's where the hypocritical part comes into play. What I would do, though, to fix this, I'd relook at that whole space. I think you have too much of it being used with open tables. You have no value boxes. You have probably no real overhead or overhead um, inventory, I should say, to where you could quickly keep resupplying, resupplying. If you think you're just going to keep going to card shows and send your guys to card shows to buy out every time, that's not going to work. You need to have a rolling team of two or three dudes. Um, maybe one that does the local buys and two that go out and just drive and, you know, in the cards HQ truck. You know, maybe you buy an old budget truck or a new one, you spray paint or cards HQ, and you just go out buying. But that's the only way you're going to get the inventory at a very reasonable price across the board by buying it that way, having people going through it, sorting it, and then you start having all that bulk. My one question is, do you guys think all these cards that are in right, these little uh, display cases, are they listed on eBay right now? I bet you they're not. I'd have them listed on eBay. Because you have to sell stuff. Jeff, get with eBay. You used to be partner. I know they sponsored you. Tell them, hey, I, I want to start listing all my stuff on there. Give me a deal like you do DC Sports and Probstein. You got the voice. You got the power, man. Do it. I don't want to see you falter because I just have a bad feeling if you falter, there's going to be a long spiral of bad things going on out there. Regardless of what anybody thinks about Jeff Wilson as a person. I shouldn't say as a person, as a person in the hobby. Mr. Will Greer is better than Kyler Murray and all this other stuff that we see all the time. He falters. I think we take a ding out there. And if it's due to, you know, he's not listening to everybody else's thing on to, he just keeps listening to all the positives, like, oh, it's great in here. I love it. He's not fixing it. Then it comes down to his own fault. But... If we don't put it out there and say, hey, you should look at doing this stuff to as improvements, I'm telling you, you're not using your space wisely. You're not buying very well. I mean, I see you at the card shows buying. Everybody's coming up to you. Oh, we pay 70%, some 80 It's not a lot, especially if you have employees and you have an overhead each month. You would have to buy a million dollars of cards, hope to sell them all at 700000 Hopefully there's not, you know, a real high... What do you call that stuff? Uh, da, 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 charges on to, you know, where they sit there and take 2.9, 3.9, 11.9, whatever it is, put their commission fees off of it. Because then you got to buy even more. But, you know, I know your credit card machines have it. They're going to charge you commission, all that other stuff across there. But you got to look at that. Buying a million dollars at a card show, it, it's not unheard of. Don't get me wrong. But then you got to move all that stuff. Then you got to have the people, the personality to sit there and go on to whatnot and be able to sell for you nonstop. Don't know how you, you want to you tackle that piece there. I'm just letting you give you some of the stuff. The other piece, like I said, 
Inventory. Got to keep getting a lot of it in right now. This stuff here, you going out and buying, you know, a thousand cards for a hundred thousand dollars? That ain't gonna float it, man. I'm telling you, I don't know what you guys pay. I think it was seventy thousand, eighty thousand. I forget what the video was. But in all seriousness, you gotta look at the space and how you're using it. There's no value boxes, and there's nothing drawing people in there. I mean, I would have. Basketball jerseys, autographs, signed up and framed with a sticker on in case somebody wanted to buy it. Even though it's hanging on my wall for display, I'd have it hanging up there. Rare stuff all across the boards. Jeff, get people from Atlanta Braves, the Atlanta Hawks, the Atlanta Falcons. Come in, have them do autographs, something. For your grand opening, you should have had that. I, I just don't get it. But those, I'm not going to beat your grand opening up anymore. I'm sure you probably weren't too happy with it. And, yeah, I know it's kind of hard to put that smile on your face when you're like, hey, what a great first day, and really didn't. Look at some of those things there. Use those ideas. Ask people for help. Don't be afraid for help. You know, it's just like Hogwarts. If you ask for help, help will be given. People will give you their two cents, whether you like it or not. You'll get it. Maybe it makes your business a little bit better in the long run. And once it does do that, you're like, wow, this worked out pretty good, man. Thank you. You know, um, what else do you see offhand onto it? Or, you know, maybe you get three or four dudes in a room. Maybe you throw a sports car radio into a room. And uh, I think I know they had a shop. And maybe you throw uh, a couple other people into like a little Zoom meeting or Zoom them all back to back to back to back. And just talk. And listen. He word, listen to what they're telling you on this stuff. It, you know, I know probably Burbank ain't going to give you a whole lot of help because now you're a competitor and stuff like that there. But ask some of the smaller shops that are around and stuff like that there. have been around for a long time. I know they're not as glamorous and the card shop of the future, quote unquote type deal onto it. They'll give you help. They'll let you know. But good luck on to it all out there, honestly. I don't wish any new he kind of ill will on to it, but I just I just don't know how you're gonna stay afloat by with what you're doing right now. And that's where I come into play and I want to do a video. Hopefully you get to see this, listen to it offhand, because your overhead and your inventory right now, I just don't see it. I got it, you could say I purchased X amount of inventory, but to do what not at the rate you're going to need to do to be able to keep the lights on, all the fees, all the other stuff, people's paychecks. You know, you're going to want to probably get some pain. So those other two guys there, and I just use 30000 as a medium with 10 employees. You probably have more than that. It just gives you an idea how much you're going to have to sell to move to get out of there. And I mean, I'm not saying you're going to make all that profits on them whatnots. That was just a big what if. You might have to do a 1.5 million just to, you know, make profit margins to cover everybody's salaries, you know, 30, 35 people's salaries after you take out all the fees and stuff that go along the way. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think. Have you been to Cards HQ? I know you guys probably see a ton of videos. What do you think? Do you think it will uh, stay afloat for, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years while you pass down to his kids and everything? Or do you think you might be end up having a shop closed down here you know within year two years three years five years you know i don't know I'm curious what everybody else thinks i just i'm just more about the inventory and the overhead piece i just don't see that all lined up and especially the way the space is in there i got stuff with building codes fire codes and all that but you need to have value boxes you need to have stuff for set builders and all that other stuff i don't see memorabilia hanging on walls it, it looked too cartoony for me I probably would have, if I would have known what it was when I saw Card HQ and I saw all the Pokemon and stuff, I'd have thought you were a TCG shop, like, and stuff like that. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Let me know what you guys think. As always, uh, sorry, I mean, I hit 40 minutes in this video. I didn't really want to do it that long. All right. I am out for real. Take care.